Now we have seen that how to give syntax to propositional logic and write down formulas that uh, that make sense in and under the logic or other strings are not part of logic. So let's see now how can we turn into an argument into these propositional formulas. I will give you two examples. So we had this example in the previous lecture where we had written uh, an argument into a symbolic form where you have replaced all the propositions by their symbols. But still it's in English and as we said we don't like in English. We want to write in a formal form. So we'll turn this into a, a logical formula. So how do we do that? Essentially whatever is in the argument turned into a propositional uh, operation. For example, uh, therefore is turned into an implication and then we have a true premises, premises 1 and premise 2 and it implies the conclusion. Let's look at the premise 1 which says that uh, C implies this formula S implies F and then you have a premise 2 which is a negation of F so it's a not of F and then you have a conclusion that if S implies not of C. Let's look at another example. Here we are going to uh, encode a puzzle and turn it into a, a formula. Let's suppose you have this background information that the good people always tell the truth and not good people always tell a lie. Now let us consider the following puzzle. There are two people, A and B. A says, I am not good or B is good. What are A and B? Are A is good or A is bad? Or B is good or B is bad? So how do we solve this problem? First we introduce variables for different propositions and we have one proposition A is good which we call P A and we have another proposition P B we call which represents uh, B is good. Let's encode the puzzle as follows. Okay? Uh, so what is A saying? A is saying I am not good. So P saying not of PA or is saying B is good. So it is PB. Since A is saying it, then the truth value of the statement is equal to the truth value of A being good. So we write equal to PA. Now we have to ask ourselves this question. Is this formula satisfiable? And if this formula is satisfiable, you can assign a value to P, A and P, B such that this, this formula holds, then you can say, well, this puzzle has a solution and here is my solution. So far, we have not discussed what do you mean by satisfiable and what is the assign, what value you can potentially assign to P, A or P, B. We will come to the next lecture. But the idea has to be clear. We can translate these this real world problems uh, and turn into a, a, a formula. And then we can ask ourselves, how to solve it.